Hey folks, Matt Sharp here with another Pacific Angler video. Today we're asking the question, did Rio come out with the best fly line for 2020? To do that, we're going to rip apart a fly line because they say it's way more durable. We're also going to take it out and cast it, tell you guys what we feel, look at some of the technologies that go into it. Lastly, we're going to be giving away one of these lines for free so you can try it out for yourself if you get lucky. Details on how to enter that at the end of the video. As always, you want to see more videos like this, consider hitting the subscribe button, hit that like button, and let's see if this is the best line of 2020. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in with me. Today, we are looking at this guy right here, the new Rio Elite Gold. Um, now, full disclosure, this has been one of my favorite fly lines for years. Uh, I love the taper. It balances really well. We can do indicator work with it. We can do dry fly work with it. And it just has a really nice controllability when we're trying to mend over distance. So call me a fanboy. This I was really excited when I heard that they're making some changes, but at the same time, I was always a little bit concerned that changes might ruin something that's already great. So let's take a look at it. Now, when we pull up the uh, Rio site here and what they have to say about this line, the first thing that they're really hitting at, and I alluded to this earlier, is they're trying to make this line more durable. And out of all the criticisms that I could throw at the previous lines, it was that they may have been a little less durable than maybe their competition. Not bad. I mean, we never saw an alarming number of these lines come back, but they did come back. Rio was always amazing, took care of our customers, no questions asked. But a cracked line or a scuffed line is something always that's a pain in the butt when you're out in the field. So their first goal was to make this outcast um, and outlast. And they're saying that their slickness comparison, so that means it's gonna, first of all, shoot like a hot dang, but it's also not gonna catch and abrade on things as easily, is much higher uh, than the competition, all the way up uh, even 60% higher than some of the other leading lines out there. But that'll be cool, and you, I did notice this. I'm gonna take you guys out casting with this line, but there were a few casts that I botched and didn't think they'd go, but just because how slick this line was, it sort of made up for my mistake and fired out there for me. Now, the cycles before cracking and cycles before abrasion. So what they're doing on this is they've got a test and we're going to test this. I'm maybe not as scientifically as Rio's done, but I'm going to try to show you guys this in the shop here. We're going to hack up uh, one of these fly lines and see if we can abrade them. But they're saying that they're getting literally 50%, no, 150%. Sorry, what is, I can't do my math. I'm not a mathematician, I'm a fishing guy, damn it. But 150,000 cycles versus 62,000 cycles of the competition. So that's kind of cool. We're gonna see if that's a thing. Now the core technology they also changed. They changed it so it's actually going to have more stretch. Now the big selling feature of real lines for the last bit has been it's been in touch, meaning there's been no stretch. But in a way that may not be good. I have noticed a few times where I would have liked just a little bit of stretch. And you know, when you're setting the hook on a fish, you know, when you're setting the hook in a strip set, that kind of thing, it's nice to have that connection but sometimes if you overdo it a little bit, you might snap off that fish. And so they've added that back in. That's also gonna give them the ability to have a little bit more breaking durability in their line, which again, some people were complaining about. I never experienced that personally, so I can't speak to it. And we didn't see too many lines come into the shop that have been completely broken, let's say on a fish or a snag, but it's something that Rio wanted to address. So hopefully those problems that are out there have been nailed. Now. What they've done is they've done two series of new lines. They have the Elite, uh, which is this guy here. So this is gonna take advantage of that slick technology, the core that has the little bit of stretch, and as well as their tri-color. Flip it around, they're galling at the premium, which is the standard. Now, I'm a little annoyed at this, but they've taken out tricolor as far as I can tell in the samples that I've seen in the demos. Things may change, but it looks as though they're only gonna be dual color. Now, what, is that, what does tricolor and dual color mean? Well, this line, if you can see it here, see it up there really close, see if we can get a focus for you, you can see there's three colors in that line. 
We've got a lighter color in the back on the running line, a yellow in the middle for handling, and then a green on the front, so it makes it a little stealthier. That's really smart. Now, why would you care about tricolor? Well, that's marking your distances when it comes to a cast, meaning that the first two colors are marking the head. The middle is going to be the middle of that head. That gives you a really nice thing to pull to your strip in line off the reel. You get right to that sweet spot of where you like to cast. Also, when you're going back and forth above in the air and you're looking at things, you're going to be able to gauge things really quickly. I use it a lot, maybe if beginners wouldn't care, but I do really enjoy that tricolor. And unfortunately, in the non-premium version, uh, sorry, they call it the Elite, sorry, in the premium, the, again, the marketing guys are making this terminology a little bit confusing. So we've got premium and elite. The elite is the tricolor, the premium is dual color. And again, not overly happy about that, but if they've made a better line, it's still gonna be okay. Okay, so let's see if we can prove whether this is true, whether this line is more durable. It's gonna be a totally unscientific test, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this line. This is the line I'm gonna be giving away for free, guys, but we're gonna cut four feet off of it. Now, if you win this line, just don't tell your friends that it's cut because that way, if you're trying to make a full backing cast, you're gonna be casting like 86, 87 feet of line and it'll look like you threw the full 90. Just don't tell anyone, it'll make you look good. But you're gonna miss the back loop. I apologize, full disclosure when you get this line you're gonna see about, uh, let's go, yeah, let's go about this much. That looks about right to me. And there it is. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna compare it to a bunch of other lines. We're gonna run it over some granite out on the counter of our shop out front. Out we go onto the floor. So out here, this counter is notorious uh, for having a little bit of a sharp edge. She tends to bite people a little bit. We'll take a look at that in a second. And so what I've done is we've got 22 ounce uh, sturgeon weights here. You can see them here. And all I'm gonna do is run them over the edge. I'm not gonna tell you guys which line is which. We're gonna take a peek and see what's more abraded. All right, this may take a little bit longer than expected. All right, my arms are getting tired, but uh, we're definitely seeing some results here. We've got chunks of line in different areas. Stuff's looking noticeably marked up. So let's zoom it in and see what we've got here. So this guy, this is actually impressive. So I've got the three lines here. Boom, boom, boom. And when we run our hand through this one, it is just a mess, just like grit. I could have that ripping through fly guides and you would hear it going through. So this one took a pretty heavy chunk out of it. Now this guy in the middle, funnily enough, this is the cheapest of the lines, a little bit spun there. I can definitely feel it actually, interestingly enough, I don't think it was because it was spun too much. It's sort of kinked up already. You can tell that's, oh yeah, the whole core is coming off of it. I just wanna see if I can show you guys that. It's absolutely fried, um, all sort of twisted up and messy. It's actually not because of the spinning. It's probably spun a bit, but you can feel the core is, the, the core is literally almost coming off of the fly line. Now flip it around to this guy, and this is the last one on my sort of setup. And I, I can't feel a single nick on this. There's not an abrasion, not a nick. Everything feels exactly like it was when I put it on this rack. This is that new slick cast. So that's super cool. That could be something. Full disclosure, one of the lines was an old reel line. Uh, one that uh, was brand new, not used, but was from their last generation and the coating just got torched. The other line was a mainstream-esque line, uh, no name brand, but it definitely was nicked up and noticeable from this. And the last one was that Rio Gold Premium, or is it Elite, sorry. The marketing guys should have done a better job of that. All right, so final impressions. Uh, what do I think of this guy? Well, the casting was fun. Uh, there were numerous casts that I made where I was like, ah, I didn't hit that well, but the ones that were off seemed to go a little bit farther than I was expecting. Now, it could be a placebo effect. Lines can be like that. You sometimes have to get out for multiple trips to get a great feel, but there were a number of them where I was like, that shouldn't have gone that far, but it actually did. I got, that's gotta be that slick technology ripping through the guides. Now, my one downside to that was it was slick. 
didn't feel like I'm used to in my hand. So it shot through my hands a little bit more. I didn't lose grip on it, and I think that's something I'd get used to, but it was noticeably slicker, which when you have line slip or cold hands might be not something you're looking for. The other thing I noticed with this line was that it performed exactly like a real gold normally does. So the weight distribution is the same. It's the same line we like on that front. And outside of that, it cast, like I said, pretty much the same, so no change there. Now, what do I love about it? Well, I definitely think that abrasion resistance is going to be a big improvement. Uh, I don't know how many times I've stepped on a line, nicked a line, been pulling at a rock because it's jammed up on the side of the river. And I'm gonna have the peace of mind now to know that I can push it a little bit farther than I'm used to when it comes in that regard. Now, what do I not like about it? There are a couple things. First one is that slickness. I might have to get used to that, the firing through my fingers. It didn't have the same feel that I'm used to uh, uh, from standard fly lines. It was very slick. Also, the marketing. Marketing guys, Elite Premium, come on, can't you give me something a little bit simpler, a little bit more straightforward? And I'm also choked that they took the tri-color out of the premium version. And that's the last criticism I am going to have of this Elite line. They've jacked the price up. Even though I sell fly lines, I, I don't really like the jack on this price. So is it worth it? I think it is. I think it's gonna be something if you're buying a new fly line that you definitely wanna consider getting the Elite. Uh, the premium line is good. It will cover your basis as well. Definitely worth looking at if you're looking at a line. Again, exact prices. I'm gonna be talking in Canadian rubles. We're looking at sort of the buck 10 to buck 20 for the premium. And then we're in that buck 50, buck 60 range for the elite. So definitely a little bit more of an investment than we're used to when it comes to this side of things. All right guys, so hopefully that answers some questions of whether it's worth upgrading. If you've got an old line, it's cracked, it's beaten up, it's time to upgrade, you will love the new real lines. If you have a new old real line or a new line from another company, probably not a big deal to jump on the train and get a new line right now. That said, when it is time, I think you guys are gonna be really happy with this new series, ooh, upside down, this new series from Rio. All right, guys, how are you guys gonna win this line? All you guys gotta do, this exact line, the one that we cut, all you gotta do is, in the comment section down below, comment, I want the line. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. In three weeks, in the Friday Fishing Report, I'm gonna be announcing the winner out of those comments. Now, all you have to do is contact me from that, and as long as you live in BC, I'm gonna ship this line to you for free. If you're outside of BC, don't worry, I will ship it to you. I'm just gonna have to do it at my cost for shipping. As always, guys, you wanna see more stuff where we look at cool tech around the fishing industry. We also do the Friday Fishing Report every week. If you're a BC person and wanna get up-to-date fishing knowledge, Consider hitting that subscribe button, hit that like button. We'll catch you in the next video.